I'm going to show you how to how to disable the governor mechanism that's on this uh, Tillotson HS carburetor. Uh, this particular model is a 147D. Uh, it's used on Pioneer Farm Saws, at P41, and apparently on the, the P50 that I just acquired. Kind of surprised that they would use the same carburetor on an 82cc saw as they would on a 66cc saw. I'm a little leery of that, to be honest with you, but I just measured the bore on the P50, and apparently it is a 52 millimeter bore piston, so that's definitely, definitely is a P50. Um, anyhow, maybe there's something different with the, the nozzle that's in here. There's obviously something that's different, but uh, one thing that, that I don't like is, is the governor that's on these things. <clears throat> now, they're a great fail-safe. It's probably uh, a reason why a lot of these old, uh, a lot of these old engines are, are not burnt up. Uh, so with that in mind, I mean, it, you don't have to take them out. It's definitely going to protect your engine. But I find that they just four-stroke like crazy. Uh, unless you're cutting, you know, big, big wood, which, you know, definitely a P50 is meant for. But, uh, I mean, regardless. There's a lot of other saws that have these uh, HS model uh, carburetors, and they have this governor in them. So we're going to show how to disable it. Yeah, it's very simple. The hardest part is usually getting these suckers out of there because they're uh, they're in there with a with a type of sealant, which uh, it can be really difficult to get out. <clears throat> so to make life a little bit easier, I just like to take this this choke uh, valve right out. The valve itself isn't in the way, but this handle is. So I like to take pictures of this just so I can remember exactly how the the valve goes back in and then how this lever goes through. Uh, something to keep in mind is uh, there's a little ball bearing in here on this side and a spring. So when you go to slide this out, uh, the spring could go flying. So we're going to keep that in mind. So the first thing to do to pull this thing out is, like I said, the only thing that's retaining this is there's like a little notch in the shaft and a ball bearing. So you got to remove the valve itself. And to do that, you just simply... Remove that screw. Tilt it up like that. And then, uh, yeah, pull it out. Sometimes they're in there a bit. There we go. Pull it out. And again, it's a good idea to remember exactly how that thing came out. Now we're going to try and pull this out without losing everything. Just kind of work it and then keep everything down. Because that bearing or that ball is going to come flying out of there. There. Shaft is out. And then there's a little ball in there. I'm gonna try very carefully not to lose. If I can remember which way it comes out of here. There, it's out now. And then there's also a spring in here, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Come on out of there now. You know what? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not falling out. So why don't we just leave it in there? Yeah, one less thing to lose. So put the ball bearing over there. So there, we got that stuff out of the way. Now we want to get this thing out. And now it's brass, so it's going to be soft. We're gonna have to be very careful not to uh, not to cam that thing out and strip it, or else 
you either have to drill the darn thing out or just leave it in there and then that's it. That's all there is to it. You're left with the governor. And that's going to be too big of a screwdriver, but that's the, the good strong one that I wanted to use. Jeez. And now I find sometimes it's easier if you, well not easier, but it might help us if we tighten it a bit first. Oh, geez. Yeah, see, that screwdriver is not going to fit in there the way I want it to. And then that one there, yeah, that one fits in good. So find your one, find yourself one that fits good. Or else you're, you're done before you even get started here. You might have to put it in the vise or heat it. Because uh, it is hard to get these things out. It's not coming out without a fight, that's for sure. Whew. I don't think we're getting that out of there. Boy, oh boy. All right, time out. I'm gonna get uh, the heat gun and try and heat it. See if I can get it out that way. Cause we're just gonna end up camming that thing out and it's not coming out. All right, hold on a minute. We'll pick up the camera in a second here. Okay, so we got our little heat gun out and we're gonna try this method. Again, this uh, this is definitely the hardest part about this is just trying to get the darn thing out of there. I'm gonna have this on a real hot setting. And you wanna make sure you get everything pulled out of this, all the diaphragms and gaskets and everything or else you're gonna probably melt them. crazy on this let's try that let's try that I don't know we might be out of luck here there oh no I don't think we're getting this one out I don't think it's coming out one staying in there. Man, man. Well, why do they got to put these things in there so freaking? Like crazy. cammed out enough that that's actually going to fit now. And it does. It's not a good thing though. Oh yeah, there we got it. I didn't think that was going to come out of there. But we got it. Just, uh, yeah, got lucky on that one because it was uh, definitely cammed out pretty bad. We are well on our way to wrecking the, the thread and it was going to be in there for good. And it is hot. Alright, so we got that out. And that's uh, what the governor is. Governor Valve. Can't hold on to it here. It's just a little ball bearing in there. Let me see if I can get a set of needle nose pliers or something. Do it that way. Yeah, 
that help maybe get a little bit closer I don't know if it'll focus in anyway there's a little ball bearing in inside of that in the very end and I believe that you know once you get a certain um, vibration or velocity there that gets pulled there's little passages in there anyway without getting I, I don't really understand exactly how it works all I know is that this thing opens up and allows more fuel to, to enter the, the carburetor so you don't go lean. So what we're going to do is we got that thing out finally. You take and you cut a little piece of tin that's the same size um, as the inside of that. I'm going to leave a little washer in there. There's a little brass washer in there. I'm going to leave it in there. I'm going to cut a little piece of tin from a piece of pop can, something really thin. And now I'm assuming that you know, something thin like this is what you want. But the same size as the end of that thing. So it's a bit of, you know, trial and error to get it right. Just use these little tin snips. Go around. Make a big circle. And just keep making it smaller. And smaller. Anyhow, you get the idea. You just cut the piece of tin so that it fits down into there, and then you tighten it back in. Okay, so here we are moving along with uh, blocking off this governor for Tilton HS 147D. Um, I'm also rebuilding the carburetor. I didn't bother including those steps in this video. Um, but what I did do was uh, the carburetor has been completely disassembled and I kind of got this tip, I mean kind of, I got this tip from uh, another guy's YouTube channel. Uh, you, you've probably seen it there, uh, Smitty's Chainsaws. And uh, something that I seen him do or I heard him doing one time was soaking the carburetor in, uh, in pine saw overnight. Now I've never done that before until now. Uh, I think it's a common um, method for like guys that do dirt bikes and stuff like that. I personally never done it, but I figure why not try it. So, uh, oh, thanks Smitty for the tip. Um, I just soaked it in pine saw overnight and then sprayed it out with carburetor cleaner. And now we're going ahead and we're putting everything all back together. So I've already um, put the pump side together first. I always do that side first. And now we're going to go ahead and put... Uh, the metering side together and I've already put the needle uh, and the lever and everything all back in so next step would be I suppose the uh, gasket that goes on here and then that make sure you just slide it into the notch Pump diaphragm is down. Put on the cover. Yeah, I kind of uh, I was doing some more reading. So I was a little leery about this carburetor being on a Pioneer P50 chainsaw. It's one of those things when you get a chainsaw that's new to you. And all these saws are 40, 50 years old. You never know what uh, has been done to them or, you know, what somebody has taken off a long time ago and replaced. And it wouldn't be hard to replace a carburetor or take a carburetor because I, what I read in the service manuals is they all say a Walboro SDC carburetor was on a P50. Now maybe that's early, uh, maybe that's early P50s, I don't know. Well, hopefully this is the right carburetor. A little disappointing if it's the wrong one. It won't run right. It would run lean, I would think.
side. So that's that side. Now, I did manage to get the spring and all that stuff out of there. Just to make sure I wouldn't lose it and I cleaned it all up. All right, so we need to get this uh, little piece of tin trimmed down so we can put it in there. Let me go ahead and put that little brass washer back in before I forget. I don't know that it's totally necessary to put it in there, but there's a couple of passages uh, that lead into this uh, little recessed area. And I would hazard a guess that it's it's a calibrated thickness so that uh, everything lines up right. So I'm going to put it back in, and as I said, using a really thin piece of tin like from a pop can is probably a good idea. I thought about using a welch plug because a welch plug actually fits in there almost perfectly but then I'm worried that it would be too thick if it doesn't matter the thickness then that's actually a really good idea is you don't have to bother trimming it and all this stuff you just throw a welch plug in it's already circular it's perfect size instead of doing this My luck, I probably trimmed it too small or the wrong size, and I'm going to have to cut another one. I feel like that's going to be too big, probably. A little too big is probably a good thing, though. Yeah, I don't know if I like this. Yeah. Trimming on that. I don't know. It's probably a better way of cutting this if you had like an actual punch of some sort. This is pretty, uh, pretty ghetto the way I'm doing it, but as I said, I've done it on a few other ones and it and it worked. And now speaking of a punch, I think I'll use a punch to seat that. I believe I will. This one here probably will fit good. And push it down in there. And yeah. I think that did the trick. I don't know if you can see down in there, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit dark, but you get the idea. It's, it's now blocked off. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Put that away, and then the next step is going to be just go ahead and put that right back in. It's not going to uh, it's not going to work now because it's blocked off, and that's what we want. We want to be able to uh, control the fuel flow just with our own jets. Oh, and yeah, that's not the right size screwdriver anymore. And now I had thought about putting some sealant on these threads. Like you could probably put some moto seal or something on here. Not maybe something I'll do if I pressure test this carburetor and I'm getting leaks, then I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and put some moto seal on it. Okay, so there we go. Little valves back in there. And now we got to try and remember. Yeah, it went like that. We got to put the the choke shaft. And this little spring. Um, and now another thing, if I remember correctly, where is my little screwdriver? There it is. Yeah, okay. You got to put the spring in first. It just goes back down that little spot. Should slide right in. And it does. And then the ball bearing, I believe, has to go in from the side, if I remember correctly, and it does. So now it's sitting high because the spring's there. So what you gotta do is you slide the choke lever in. Oh, this is really the greatest angle, but whatever. It's the best I can do here at the moment. So you slide that in, and then you also, you have to depress the, uh, the ball bearing. 
so you can actually get this thing to slide in yeah and there it almost popped out on me so you got to be careful of that you also got to have this thing the right way yeah because there's a certain way that it'll go in and there's a certain way it will not go in because they're kind of uh yeah it rotates and then locks into place now there we go you know it's the key you just press down the uh, the ball um, all right is that the way it's gonna be because it's gonna sit in like that gonna sit like that and then you pull the choke and that's gonna close it yeah so we got it in right and you just take and you slide this shutter back in or valve or whatever you want to call it am I doing it the right way I don't remember I really should look on my well I think it's the right way because I can see the the scratch marks the way it came out I'm quite sure it's the right way, yeah. Just kind of help it, help it in there, and make sure that it closes, and it does. And then we just put our screw back in there. Tighten it down before you tighten it down. Maybe just give this another, you know, open and close there, just to make sure it. Is lined up as well as it can be and then snug up that screw like so I ain't gonna go crazy but you know give her a good twist and that's how you block off the governor so now it will not uh, be dumping you know more fuel in there than than what we already have controlled with with our needles so if you're going to do this make sure you're you're comfortable with with tuning uh, a carburetor or else uh, if you're cutting some smaller stuff and then you go to cut some bigger stuff and it's cold out or something you're going to probably create a leaner condition than what you are normally cutting and that's not good you could get it could get hot uh, and vice versa um, so just yeah be familiar with tuning a carburetor and uh, yeah if you want to uh, block off your governor that's that's how you do it I'm gonna go ahead and pressure test this carburetor I'm gonna do that off camera you know I'm not gonna bother taking up too much more this is uh, was supposed to be again quote unquote quick video and it's probably well over 20 minutes to a half an hour Anyhow, I hope that that was uh, helpful to anybody out there who's looking to do this. I know the first time I went to go do it, I looked around on YouTube and I, I couldn't find a single video on how to do this. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. Um, and yeah, hit thumbs up, subscribe, you know, all that jazz. If not, well, whatever. Just enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.